that brings the Time for the show that brings the magic right to your speakers. Ears up! That's right, everybody. It's Ears Up. We're back here in the studio for another fun-filled 15 minutes of show. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, actually, it might be this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Pretty> close. <laughs> Uh, we're here talking about the history of Bugsland. Is it a Bugsland or Bugsland or what is it? A soon to be gone Bugsland. A squashed okay. Bugsland. They're squashing Bugsland. Well, I'm surprised that hasn't been a headline yet. That actually should be how they de- deconstruct the place. Just like maybe Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Just One of those like uh, cartoon um, bug sprayers. <laughs> like the, the <laughs> hand pump, you know, with the DDT yeah, and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. I wish they would do something. That would be like great, that. man. <laughs> Someone out there will do it. Uh, anyway, so we're talking about that sh- uh, show. I was going to say show. Don't I worry. Were, I all, right, all right, all right. But then I realized, anyway, yeah. whatever. I'm tired. It's fine. We'll get through it. We have a window. We're back to the Main Street Woo-hoo! windows. Uh, Yay. Bad, good job. And um, what else do we stop. have? Just stop. I'm like critiquing it right now. I'm like changing words. I'm like, just <laughs> stop it because I'm going to delete like an important line and it's going <laughs> to not make sense. Pencils down, turn your work (laughs) in, it's already (laughs) over time, it's fine. Uh, We also have some Disney news to talk about, there's a lot in the news, Uh, a ton in the news actually, so it might be a rather long Disney news segment, so I hope you like it. Um, And then tonight (laughs) we're going to be doing the secret show as well, so you Patreon supporters that are listening live, I don't know if we're live streaming it or not. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. We're all set up to do it. I just don't honestly really know how much work goes into doing it. Uh, I kind of just gave that to you and told you to do it, and then... Three buttons. Oh, well. So. All right. Remind me to keep paying you, not at all. Well, it took a long time to set it up, if that... Oh, well, then... Uh, but now it's three buttons, because I'm kind of awesome. <laughs> just kind of, though. Just kind of. Uh, anyway, so uh, you Patreon people can... Um, what do they do? Go to the Patreon I page? have no idea. <laughs> oh, maybe I need to... Re- I don't know that from link. that point on uh, what uh, happens. We'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I got to remember how to do it. Uh, anyway, we have, uh, you know, like I said, man, good shows. Uh, but first, before we get into all that kind of stuff... <clears throat> <laughs> Terrence popping big cans. That was the Time perfect party. timing as <laughs> soon as it got quiet. <laughs> and he was actively trying to keep it away from the microphone. Uh-huh. So he was like, oh, no. And then it got silent. He's like, hey, It is what it is, homie. <laughs> it's like the person in the movie theater. Oh, my God. I was just going to say. That opens their candy. Like, and, like, it's always me. I'm trying really hard to be, like, really quiet. Because also, oh, yeah. like, I have a weird food thing, too. Like, I don't want people to necessarily know that I'm, like, chowing down on a bunch of candy. Okay. And so then I, like, try and do it really quiet. It's even worse in, like, a play, but, like, you do that, and then inevitably it is right when everything goes silent that, like, the bag rips open, and you're like, ah. Oh. So it's the loudest, the loudest gauge of cellophane ever? Yeah. So, uh, this is a, se- this is a secret show story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Oh, okay. Cause, cause okay. <laughs> you, you, you started that story, and then you followed it up with candy. I just thought you were going to talk about opening a beer in a movie oh, theater because yeah. that's Sam. But we all, Terrence, oh. myself, Sam, his wife, some other friends, we all went out to a movie Avery once. Becca. And uh, yeah, I, for some reason, they smuggled, <laughs> they, because I was not drinking. No, no. They smuggled in bottles, but then at some point in the uh. film, during a silent <laughs> part, a bottle got knocked over yep. and then rolled down the, like, <laughs> tears, and it was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> but the, the, the thing was, is that at that point where that happened, for yeah. some reason, it was like a super dramatic <laughs> stare <laughs> on the screen because it was quiet for like 15 seconds. And you could hear the bottle roll all the <laughs> way down to the sh- like, it, like, till it hit the last to the front. <laughs> yes. It was like it didn't hit any feet. It was and there had to have been like giggles like, also because oh, like that's hilarious. And we were, we're seeing laughing. that movie. People no, I meant you guys. But, oh, yeah. I was like, it is <laughs> I was what it is. I mortified. Don't be jealous. <laughs> well, they were the wasted. With, uh, well, that's true. Not yet. English patient. Like, no, Leonardo Titanic? DiCaprio where he gets stuck in his own dreams. Titanic. A circle of dreams. 
No, that's not what we were watching. Oh, with that um Titanic. Yeah, no. Shut up. Starts with a D. Departed. Titanic. <laughs> oh, depart, 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 departed? departed, departed, departed. Yeah, sure, sure, Stop whatever. Me. I don't know. I just remember it was n- it was an intense movie and just like camping. Yeah. Um, I've. Can't I can honestly say I've been there. Um, uh, I've I've had uh, uh, like my friends and I when I were in my twenties or whatever, uh, we would you know take fifths in and you know you mm-hmm. get some sprite and you go into the bathroom and you well we learned that you should do it in the bathroom. You pour the pour some sprite out mm-hmm. and then you pour your bottle in there. Mm-hmm. Sorry, kids. <clears throat> um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look, when your parents ever tell you, uh, uh, children, um, there's nothing that you can think of that I haven't done to like hide stuff or lie about your homework or whatever. Oh, literally it's, true. It's yeah. literally right. true. Because when you're a kid, you don't think of your parents as ever being children before. Right. They're just and your the parents d- always think of, of themselves as older children. I'm writing a note. Yeah, for the that's show. absolutely true. I have a story about. <laughs> okay, that. good. Yeah. And uh, so my friends and I were sitting in the in the in the back of the theater, and you know, crack the thing, and you know, take some sips, and and, and pour all the the whatever in, and we're like, you know, passing it around, and then at one point I kicked the bottle, the empty bottle over, <laughs> yep. and it was like flat, but it went bing 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 bing, bing. <laughs> and about two minutes later, an usher walks oh. in oh. and shines the flashlight <gasps> in like at our feet. To like look around, but luckily one of my friends picked the bottle up and put it in his pocket. Oh, so there's nothing. Guy. So we're like, he's a real MVP. Hey, dude. <laughs> Hi. Can you turn off that light and watch the movie? Yeah. And then Get at that point, here. you just I do it in the bathroom. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> great content like this is sponsored <laughs> by Getaway Today, Disney's top wholesale partner. They'll help you plan your Disneyland vacation with the best tips and secrets, all while making it affordable. With their discount tickets, reduced hotel rates, and layaway plan. Head online to getawaytoday.com slash ears up and start planning your magical vacation. Don't forget to mention Ears Up Podcast. Sent you and use promo code Ears Up to save an extra 10 bucks on your SoCal vacation package. They also do Disney World and Universal and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just Disneyland, um, but, you know, <clears throat> that's what we're about. So do it. When we go in January, we're going to use them. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Uh, you can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Uh, any feedback on the show goes to Taryn at earsup-podcast.com. Any show suggestions or guest bookings goes to Taryn at earsup-podcast.com. You can say hi, hi to Bev. And anything else comes to me, I'm Jason at earsup-podcast. Blah, blah. <laughs> Actually, keep the show suggestions going. Because uh, there's some good ones coming in right now. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, they're I'm getting they're, some. Oh, they're coming in hot. So thank you. Cool. Guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. I love that. Now, you can support the show in uh, other ways. Go to getcoveyears.com, buy some coveyears. Go to patreon.com slash ears up and become a Patreon supporter. You can tell your friends about us, which is the most important part. Jump on forums and groups the kids are all on these days. Spread the word about Ears Up Podcast. We're great. You're great for listening. Actually, you're better than us for listening, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know... We need uh, we need some help. Let's go. Let's go. Um. All right, Bev. You have a. a oh, you want to do these things? Oh yeah. yeah, let's do these. I've been waiting like a. Week. So we have uh, uh, some lovely listeners up in Canada, Saskatchewan, I believe, and um, Carrie and Jeff and Ben and there's another. Scene. You shouldn't have done that. You should have done that. All of them. You should have done it. Nick, Ted, Alice, Bill, Ted, Fred, Fred, friendly friend. I know. I can see. I can see the face. Yeah. I know. I know exactly what he looks like. I can't think of his name. Darn it. Do a sketch real fast. Please sketch. 30 <laughs> seconds. Go. <laughs> anyway, they sent us a box of like mysterious gifts. The box is, I don't know, what, four, four by four, four inches, three by four, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and even Jeremy got one, which is cool, but yep. Jeremy's not here, so we mailed Jeremy his gift, but these have been sitting in the studio for two weeks. Oh my gosh. I and I've been waiting to open them. It's been painful. Like, I've walked really past has. it, and I was like, I'm just going to open one, and I just won't tell anyone. <laughs> it's like Christmas, but like when your present's sitting there. Yeah. Like, like Christmas. Oh yeah, I guess just like Christmas. <laughs> All right, well, let's open up real fast because okay. I'm sure not everybody cares. But uh, and they are oh oh very cool. Oh, oh wow, I love it. It's a it's a it's little a travel wine glass. <laughs> let's call it yeah wine. Taryn gets the wine glass. It is. 
is. Is it? Is it? Insulated. What? Yeah, it's a it's, it's a wine. It's like tumbler. a thermos. It's a tumbler. Yeah, yeah, it's a tumbler, but, but it's shaped like a stemless wine glass. But they're all. Can you put the the camera over here for a second? Because I want to yes. I want to read what it says. Because this is yeah. perfect. All right. Yeah, yeah. It says abs are great. But have you tried churros? <laughs> oh, that's good. That's amazing. That's a good one. Aww. That is says? practically perfect in every way. Wow. I love it. <laughs> Taryn? Mine doesn't have words because mine uh-huh. doesn't need words. Mine is a beautiful castle. The, the castle. Mine well, yes. says this chamber has no windows and no doors. Nice. Oh, very good. Awesome. Thank I feel you. Like so uh, they're all very personalized. I think yeah. she made these. Wow, because she oh. she's got this like die cutting machine thing. She's on. She told me she was on a kick. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so curious to see what Jeremy says. This is sick. yeah. I, I bet I can guess though. It's probably has something to do with Titanic. Mazel. <laughs> I would guess Ghostmobile, but that's just me. Yeah, it could be Ghostmobile. Yeah. Oh, I'd rather be drinking wine in Epcot. Can I use this? I'm just you can use this right now. I would wash it, but because uh, you never know what's in it. Anyway, thank you guys very much. That was very very nice of you. You did very not have awesome. To thank you. Send us anything. Um. All right, Beverly. I also appreciate that this has a sippy lid. Does, does everybody else oh, have yeah, one? Yeah, and it seals. It yeah. has like a gasket, too. That's what I mean. It's a travel <laughs> wine cup. It's yeah. like an outdoors wine cup. Like. Yes. Yeah. You won't get. You won't break it, throw it at people. That's Concert in yeah. the park. So if you want to send us gifts, please send them to Jason Petros. At three th- <laughs> wow. Uh, all right, Bev, let's go ahead. Let's do a window. Are we going to start huh? with the window? Okay. Yeah, yeah, why not? You, you, good choice, because I'm just going to keep editing it halfway through. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are going to be talking about, and I might butcher his name, Don DeGrati. Does that sound right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Don was born in 1911 in New York City, and he grew up in San Francisco, California. He's a local boy. For us, anyway. <laughs> uh, he joined the Walt Disney Studio at the height of the Depression in the 1930s. Um, while he was at Disney, he was a screenwriter who often referred to himself as a misplaced cartoonist at heart. Oh. Yeah, I like that. Um, he developed the color and styling for the, and I've actually, I've heard of the ride, but I didn't know this was a movie, which is kind of shameful, I'm sure. The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Uh-huh. So yeah, yeah. Animated uh, John, dude. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen it. It's cute. Me either. Well, yeah, uh, one of us has to watch it for the oh review. Oh, my God. Because that's yeah. the yeah. movie. Who's up? Who's up? <laughs> that's the movie for the review right now. Oh, it is? is it? Yeah, it is. Oh. I thought we're stuck on that one, and then it's Cinderella after that. No. no. I think we missed one entirely. We skipped one. And Why then did we, we skip to, it? Because no one wanted to do it. And I said, all right, go, let's go to the next one, and that's uh, the next one. No. Let's yeah. not skip that's it. That's not fair. No, no, we're not skipping it. I'll do it this weekend. I'll do whichever one we skipped. Okay. I'll do it. Okay. I'll find it. I'll let you know. All right. Anyway, so the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. He later worked on the story for Lady and the Tramp and the production design for Sleeping Beauty. Um, in 1959, he was personally asked by Walt to design the underground cavern sequences. <laughs> Why can't I say that word? I don't know. <laughs> the second time I failed. Sequences uh-huh. for Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Okay. Uh, this was his first time ever delving into the world of live action film production. Um, but... He was successful and later went on to develop story sketches for Kidnapped and also served as sequence consultant on Pollyanna, as well as The Absent-Minded Professor and The Parent Trap. Hmm. In 1962, he collaborated with uh, Bill Walsh on the live-action screenplay The Son of Flubber. Uh-huh. Yep. Also. Sequel uh, to Flubber. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yep. And as well as an unknown film called Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. Never. <laughs> For which, it's the like Emily Blunt movie that's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> For which uh, he Blunt. also shared an Oscar nomination for Desti- Best Adapted Screenplay with Bill Walsh. Um, the 49ers coach? Yes, well, so you too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. The guy before George Seifert. Exactly. Uh, so a, a fun quote that I found, a couple actually. Uh, songwriters Richard and Robert Sherman had this to say about Don in their book. Uh Walt's time from before to beyond. He's the sort of guy who would write with a sketch pad and a charcoal pencil. He could visualize the sequences right there on paper and you could see them come to life. <coughs> Almost everything you... This is a separate quote, not yeah. from uh, the Sherman Brothers. Almost every se- everything you see in the entire Jolly Holiday sequence in Mary Poppins, uh, people floating through the air, flying up the chimney, these were all visions created by Don. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, so he had it pretty rad imagination kind of a big deal yeah. well yeah and, and i mean those are iconic totally yeah. scenes man so oh, yeah, yeah i read that and i was immediately like oh it's a jolly like, yeah. <laughs> you know what a pop culture impact man that's totally cool. 
Um, as Walt has been known to do, mm-hmm. he tapped into Don's artistic side and had him develop costumes for the Disneyland theme park, um, including uniforms for the band as well as the exter- exteriors for the attraction um, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. After 34 years with the company, uh, Don retired in 1970. He passed away in 1991. Uh, he was named a Disney legend only months after his death. Uh, oh. His window is located above the market house, which is now Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> and, um, Double sad. <laughs> yeah, know, poor guy. And uh, just, it, uh, just a couple of um, his, what's it called? Uh, Credits, mm-hmm. Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp, Darby o- a lot of the things I mentioned, Darby O'Gill and the Little People, Sleeping Beauty, Pollyanna, The Absent-Minded Professor, Parent Trap, Son of Lover, Mary Poppins, Lieutenant Crusoe, USN, Blackbeard's Ghost, The Love Bug, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, hmm. and Scandalous John. Nice. Wow. Scandalous, scandalous, scandalous John. Scandalous John. Scandalous John, John but that's a different. Uh, so what, yeah. two of those movies maybe were nobody's ever heard of in their entire lives? Yeah, I've but, never uh, heard of Scandalous else. John yeah. and... Blackbeard's Ghost. I've never heard of that. I haven't heard of that one either. But it's pirate. But yeah, everything else. So, and I just thought that this was. As we get more and more into the the windows, um, there becomes less of it. Like there's windows for all sorts of people, but there's less available about them Mm -hmm. online. And I was excited to find this one because there actually was kind of a lot of information available about him, and he's involved in all these movies that we've all seen and love. But I'd never heard of the guy. Right. So I thought it was super cool. That is cool. Awesome. Good job. The end. The end. All right, Terrence. Terrence is doing the history today of Bugs Land. It's his favorite. He's still typing it out right part now. Of the <laughs> I just thought of something else I wanted to say. So, uh, um, yeah, so sorry uh, in advance. Uh, normally, I have like 10 pages of notes. I have a page and a half. There's not a lot to it. No, because it's not one of those lands that have been revamped 12 times. And, yeah, and it was yeah. a little it was a little rushed, but hey, it is what it is. Let's get into <laughs> it, all right? <clears throat> I'm glad you're doing this, honestly, because not only is it leaving soon, but I still say, mm-hmm. apart from Cars Land, it's the best themed land of the Disneyland Resort. Absolutely. I completely agree with because you. Because you walk into it and you're in the, the Bugs Land. Yeah. yeah. I want to climb into a roach motel. I feel such like a bug. <laughs> like the plants, all of it, it just makes you feel it's so a, It's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. It really is. Okay. All right, go for it. Cheers. All right. <clears throat> so many people view the original Disneyland attractions as classics that should never be changed and never be touched. True. Honestly, there are so many good ideas for overlays within Fantasyland alone, but they will never come to fruition because Walt touched these rides. Well, the same is not true for DCA. (laughs) So on February 8, 2001, California Adventure, as it was known then, was open to the public. There were minimal attractions due to the rushed nature of the park. Basically, it was whelming. It wasn't <laughs> underwhelming. It wasn't underwhelming. It was just whelming. It was just kind of there, about right? right? Yeah. So um, amongst the various areas of uh, within the park were two areas that were very, very different from each other. Okay. The first was the Bountiful Valley Farm, and it was presented by Caterpillar. Now, this was a tribute to the abundance and diversity of agriculture in California. Lest we forget, at that time, the entire park was an homage to California. Mm-hmm. In California, right? Which is, I still think to this day, peak brilliant, right? <laughs> peak Imagineering, like dum 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 dum. <laughs> I know. The most pure form of Imagineering. Hey guys, check this you out. You know what we should do? We should make a park. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't. We should make an exact replica of Disneyland inside Disneyland. That's what I was just. They don't even need to go <laughs> to the rest of the park. <laughs> uh, All right, so. Um, all right, so it was, it was California in California. And so, I mean, honestly, who needs to put giant bears or pirates or anything like this when you can have a life-size farm <laughs> and farm equipment as your attraction? Oh, my gosh, I forgot about that. Yes. This is insane. And most people don't remember this because it was there and gone so quickly. But if you went in, like, the two-year window, this was there, you realize that it was terrible. A farm. A working <laughs> farm. It was a farm. I'll be honest. Ah! Uh- no. Okay, because I'll be yes, honest no. with you, a working farm was in the original plans for Disneyland. No, you're absolutely right. So I wonder if that's where they got the like they, because all of us Disney nerds mm-hmm. want 
a tie-in with history. We yeah. demand it. You're and right. I wonder if that's maybe, honestly, why. Like, oh, well, hey, this was in, in the original plan, so let's bring a farm back to Walt's vision and blah, blah, blah. And it's also really easy. Okay, it sounds good. Yeah. But quite honestly, going to this area was less fun than watching paint dry because you're watching corn grow. Like, that's literally what it was. It you're was. Just, it was just a walkthrough, right, of a farm. It was a walkthrough of a farm. And not a corn maze walkthrough, mind you. Mm-hmm. Just a walkthrough. You just... No, because there was, like, corn. There was like, just like carrots and, through. like... Right? I mean, it was all vegetation. First of all, of, of all the things to grow carrots, yeah, carrots. <laughs> everything happens you can't underground. See exactly. Right. You give see. me a tree. Look at the potatoes. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me an apricot tree, homie. Let's go. Corn, I like because corn is very fast. It's a, it's technically a grass. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, no. I did not know that. Yeah. Because I mean, we have a, a bunch out here in Brentwood. And, and it's it's right there. It grows super fast. It's right. very visible. Yes. Carrots. Over the course of how many days is it visible, though? Because if you're there in California Adventure at the time for a day, you're not really seeing anything. Well, no, it doesn't matter. But like, if if you go, if considering half the people are locals anyway, they come back more of the time. They can see it. So corn, I get right, right? because it, you want you want the best uh, growth segment per day, right? Right. But. Carrots? Yeah, I know. But Might as well plant potatoes. Let's, I mean. let's also they just did. go back to <laughs> they're go. all local and they're going to come back. Yeah. I, I went to that farm <laughs> right. once. Yeah, yes. Well. I was there for five days. <laughs> Let's right. go see corn. Look, unless it's <laughs> unless it's cooked and dripping in <laughs> yeah. butter and salt, I don't want it. <laughs> unless it has been shucked for me, we good. Homie don't want it. All right. So so anyway, so you're, wa- you're walking through and you're watching crops grow yeah. gradually you're walking th- you're literally walking through a farm i love it so the petting zoo <laughs> mm-hmm. was not there as well there's no petting zoo okay okay so um what you get instead of a petting zoo is you get fake animals that's what you have so fake an- like animatronic animals or with like stone i don't remember this big or plaster i guess plastic plastic, plastic. animals Oh, you had like bo- yeah. like you had like <laughs> cows and you had chickens and you had stuff like that and they're all plastic and here's the sign explaining wait hold on hold on yeah, here's the yeah, sign yeah, explaining yeah. why you're seeing two life size plastic cows in this area since the first ho- a herd of beef cattle was moved oh get out of my face I swear to you that's what I said was moved to California in 1774. Production of cattle and calves has become the fourth most valuable farm product in the state. I totally remember With this. With over one million cows producing milk, California is the nation's number one dairy state. You'll also learn about irrigation and the water systems, as well as a history of the Caterpillar tractors. There's also a small water park um, attraction. I want to call it a water park. It's a water area. Um, is that on the plaque, too? It's not on the plaque. Okay. No, this is just what you see in this area. This is just, that's what they say. They're like, look, homie, I ain't calling it. I ain't calling it an attraction. <laughs> was it the? Never mind. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so there's a small water attraction as well as a gift shop where you could take home your very own caterpillar tractor in miniature form. God bless. Yes. Close by to the Bountiful Farm was another attraction called "It's Tough to Be a Bug." Yeah, now, I would imagine. Yeah, it's hard, homie. <laughs> Especially now. Goes your bye bye. Uh, this attraction had already been opened in Florida three years prior, before the movie came out. Uh, but the rendition in California had a slightly different cue. The DCA, I'm sorry, the Cal- this wasn't DC at the time, but you know what I mean. The DCA version takes uh, takes you through a recreation of Ant Al- uh, Ant Island from the movie. Inside the queue, which is inside of an ant hill, you hear insect traditions of one from a chorus line, mm-hmm. Beauty and the Beast, Tomorrow from Annie, I Feel Pretty from West Side Story, <laughs> Hello Young Lovers. Relevant. I, right. A lot but of you're, relevant. You're in a theater, though. That's why they're doing it. But you're also, the West Side Story is New York. Uh, yeah. We're in California, in California land. Yeah, I, I know, but no, they, okay. they didn't think not, this through. Not, um, Budget, homie. They didn't think this all through. Not American Graffiti. Ah, that's actually a good call. You know I mean? see L.A. area? That was a good call, yeah. Um, so you hear that, and then also Flight of the Bumblebee from West Side Story as well. Um, or Wagner, whatever. Right, right. And so since since actually this attraction Wait. is now closed forever, um, and you can never see it again. You can't find any pictures of it online either. Well, it's, it's gone. Like, it's hard to find. Yeah, it's, it's closed. So I'll, I'll take you through what happened. Uh, the show was a combination. It's basically 40. So it's a combination Not Wagner. of uh, 3D... T- no, they're stuck on it, homie. Sorry. 
Korsakov, <laughs> sorry. I meant the far I meant the farm. You can't find pictures of the farm. Oh at no, all. they try to. I'm going to interrupt you still because <clears throughs> go for it. That's, we're doing. That's, that's the role we're doing. Let's <laughs> stretch it out. It's all good. I loved. It's tough to be a bug. That the the video thing was that what that was the 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 theater. It was three, yeah, it was three, yeah, yeah. I yeah. loved it. I oh, did it, was, it, it was great because I didn't. Dis- and I think we talked about it on one of the shows. I only found out about it like briefly, and then they killed it because they're doing previews in there. Yes, and I thought yes. that was a cool thing. I thought it was really great. The spiders come down. The it things was, come all crawl into your butt. Like, it was good. Well, yeah, and we're, it was we'll great. get into that, but that, I think right. it was great as well. What they did with Actually, that was... Actually, I the cute... Sorry, again, with the... Intro, yeah, with being like underground, like like you're a, you're a in bug. The you're in, you're in the it was awesome. the whole They did a great point. job, and I feel like it was very underrepresented because it was hidden. It, it was, was totally again, hidden. I didn't know about it existed. Before. It was super hidden. They did not it, do a good job with that. It wasn't hidden. The blobber glops yes. saw that we were on All a trip. We were on a trip with them, and they were yeah. like, "Oh, we just saw this bug thing," and we're like, "I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, didn't even know it existed." So it was. It wasn't hidden. Mm. It wasn't well. The signage was terrible for it. Well, you by yeah. definition, that's hidden. No, 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 no. It wasn't no, like no, underground, no. underneath like a, a well, okay, bunker. That's, fine. But that's the problem. Is that there were like two entrances. Basically, there was an there an entrance. To go to what is Cars Land right now, and then right right before you get to that, there's an entrance that takes you into the main part of Bugs Land, and then right before that, there's a little walkway that takes you over to where the theater is. Right, and okay. you can see it. But the problem is, especially when Cars Land and Ridgeway Racers, <laughs> Radiator Street <laughs> Racers, when it opened up, they put the Fast Pass booth right there, mm-hmm. and it was yeah. right in front of the beginning of the queue, mm-hmm. and no one would go in because of that, because it's another thing they to their no attention away from. Right. Well, and also. Also, I, I don't think it did it any favors that the queue was actually kind of underground. Like, yes, you're because right. we're sheep and, you know, you see people standing in line. You're like, oh, what are they standing in line for? But if you don't see any people, you're like, oh, there's a building. It is funny because <laughs> if you if you just walk down the street and you see someone standing, you don't wouldn't assume it's a line. You would assume that their visions have, like, coalesced and, and, right. and, and, and manifested. But, but at, at Disneyland... Disneyland you can stand anywhere. Exactly. And people are like, oh, I'm going to get They'll just get right behind them. Exactly. Get in line. All right. So, um, so you what go are we in, in line for? You, you go into the attraction, um, which is 3D technology as well as animatronics. Uh, you're asked to put your bug's, eye on, your, bugs, your bug's eyes on, which is your 3D glasses. Yeah. Uh, flick and hopper. Easy for, for you to say. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, flick and hopper with both present with uh, with the theater. Um, within the theater is animatronic figures, and the remainder of the show took place on the screen. There are different triggers, um, air cannon in the seat backs in front of you, as well as ticklers in the seat. Mm-hmm. That ticklers. Were, yeah, they were ticklers. Tick- that's they tickle. what they call it. And they would come out and like touch your... If you had your, your feet all the way back, they would actually like tickle your feet as well. And most people didn't know that. Ugh. You had to sit all the way back, and they would do that. Um, I slouch too much. I can't sit back, dude. I know. Me too, either. What are you uh, talking about? So... <laughs> <laughs> so this was basically this is basically what was going on at that time. So the two the two attractions in two areas were very opposite uh, of each other and had completely different receptions. First, it's tough to be a bug was a pretty good show, but most people just liked it once because you knew what was going on. So it wasn't very good repeat, repeatability there. But it was cute and the queue was amazing. The farm sucked. It was not a draw at all and it was floundering at best. So what do you do? Well, A Bug's Life had come out four years prior, and it was good. You know, in, in the pantheon of, of Pixar uh, of Pixar movies, A Bug's Life was right in the middle at the time. But there was, was only fine. but there was only four movies out, four yeah. Pixar movies out at the time. It was Toy Story one and two, A Bug's Life, and Monsters Inc. That I was wonder it. why. So it's fourth and so it's fourth and right. Oh, I, I wonder why Toy Story two, not Toy Story. I wonder why not Monsters, Inc. I wonder why not then, because... Budget. It- you got to think about this. You already have a, a, a tough-to-be-a-bug attraction, and you can easily... Okay. Cause the, and the, well, I'll get into it right now. Okay. The original thing was just to take the characters from a bug's land and throw them in the farm and have that be all that it is. But they realized that this still wouldn't be a draw. If you replace life-size caterpillar tractors with... Li- well, a life size of your caterpillars, but if you're a bug, exactly, <laughs> right. it's still not a, not a draw. This sounds like Kim Irvine's doing. It sounds like she ruined Club Thirty Three, so why not ruin a farm? Thank you, thank you, uh, Disneyland Paris, and also thank you, Michael Eisner. 
at the time because they were cut, their budgets were tight to say the least. That's pretty much right. every time. But, that's going to be a reaction. But every you time. are right because I was thinking about it. If you constructed Monstropolis from Monsters Inc. There, mm-hmm. there's so much you could have done there, and it would have been better than just kind of literally overlaying a ride in a corner of the park to be Monsters Inc. You could have taken all that land, but they decided not to do it. So they try to figure out a way to tie in both the farm area and it's tough to be a bug. So while they were figuring out what to do, they literally did what I said. They took life size, bigger than life size versions of the characters from the movie and just put them in the farm. Yeah. Just to kind of test it out, yeah. see what would happen, <laughs> and no one went there still because there was no reason to go there. Well, right. Who wants to see a static thing when there's an entire park of moving stuff? Right. E- exactly. And it's like they don't realize... I love Walt, but Walt was dumb <laughs> to think <laughs> that walkthroughs were going to be something that people wanted. Right. And they keep trying to do that in well, areas I, of, the, of the park. I think what it, what it was is that he didn't. there was nothing like that anyways. Right. Right. So he was a showman and he right. was from, he's from the movies. He's from TV. Right. And so what do you have? You have sets. Right. right. And so people, are, well, how do we immerse right. them in there? Oh, well, we walk through the thing. Right. Like the Great American Movie Ride or whatever it was right, that right, died right. of a, 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 a horrible death. It's a walk-through drive-through it's, kind of a thing. That's yeah. all. That's all it is. Yeah. A lot of these yeah. things are kind of drive-throughs. Anyway. Haunted right. Mansion. It's a drive-through. Instead yeah. of walking, you're driving, so right. it's fine. So I, I kind of get that ideal, but that was that's thinking in the fifties and sixties. Right. It's two thousand whatever. Uh, right. Whatever. Well, Why are we still thinking walk-throughs? Well, I'll let's give go. You, I'll give you an idea. Uh, uh, an example of a walk-through we still have is that Pixie Hollow area that's in Disneyland. I literally have no idea what goes on there. <laughs> See, because it's I a have, walk-through. I do. Because you have a, a, a girl that wants to go there. You have a daughter that wants to go there. Once. She wanted to go there once. <laughs> and that's what you get with walkthroughs, yeah. is that you go through it once, because no one wants to... Although, what's we'll said the Sleeping Beauty diorama is in the castle. Dope. That is cool. Recommend. That's but cool, it's though. Definitely recommend. It's interactive. It's, it's interactive. It's not, not really. It, how see, interactive is watching, uh, looking at crops? Some things happen. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I mean, that's that's definitely like a, a, a zero to 60 right. you know, moment, right. crops versus... I'm not saying it's not in... Things move a little bit. It's dynamic. It's not interactive. Mm-hmm. Pixie Hollow is one entire line to meet fairies. You stand in the sun. Yeah. And That's you weird. meet the, what, Tinkerbell the, or earth, whatever? the earth fairy. And you take, What's an earth fairy? There's like a bunch of them. I forgot so their names. The ones that help the flowers grow that, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. From what and Disney movie? And then there's the movie. sun it's, fairy. And it's then the, the ones that are from the cartoons that are att- the attached to Tinkerbell yeah. after the fact. Oh, so but you. So it's not some like crystal just, healing. No. I can no, no, read no. your aura no. kind of thing. No crystal right. You're standing in thing, line no. and waiting for all these kids that are in line in front of you to take their pictures and do their things with this fairy, and then they move on to the next one, and then it's your turn, and then you do, and you wrap it up with Tinkerbell, and you walk out, and you're like, cool. I wish I had that hour and a half back. <laughs> I could have rode two rides and ate ten churros. I could have been at Carthay. <laughs> I, I love your thinking. All right, so sorry. Go go back to it. Um, sorry. So it's all it's all good. The, uh, <laughs> the, the tangent queen right now. I know. Uh, and another thing, <laughs> <laughs> shoes, right? I just bought Birkenstocks. Bump, bump, bump. So, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So the entire the entire um, the entire point of the land is to shrink is to shrink it down into uh, bug size. Right. So they did this by incorporating. Making everything basically just larger than life, but budgets still. So they're trying to figure out what they can do to ensure that they um, can do it for as cheap as possible. Hold so, on. so, so they had the the farm. They had the characters from the Bugs Life in the farm. No one cared. So then they decided, let's take the farm out and make a Bugs Land. Let's let's take out most of the farm. Okay. And, and make it a Bugs Land. Okay. I and wonder then, why. Like, if if nobody, and I'm, I'm, I know you don't know, right? Right. But if nobody cared mm-hmm. about going to see the crops or the bugs in the crops, why would they think that people would care about a bug's life? Like, to, to me, that movie didn't. It didn't it resonate. It, it, it didn't it, warrant in a like land pop culture like Toy Story did. You're, and, and I understand right. budgets, but also look at Pixar Pier. I mean, that th- is not very good. Right, right. Uh, f- for the budget. I bet they could have done some. Anyway, um, I wonder why Bugs Land. I wonder why I- anything there that wasn't talked about in pop culture. So, culturally relevant. Bugs Land has never, bu- A Bugs Life has never been culturally relevant, and it never will be. 
Okay, you're you're right, but once again, rem- thank you. Rem- <laughs> remember that you're three years removed from the movie at this point. You are three years removed from the movie. <laughs> Never <laughs> tell me that. More I than am. three years ago. No, at the point where they're doing this oh, okay, is what I'm it. saying. And so, sorry. There's like I said, there's only four Pixar movies. They're trying to give Pixar a bigger because Disney footprint. owned it at that time. Yeah, right? a bigger okay. footprint within the parks. They're trying to do that. So I, I get it. I'm I not saying it's the smartest thing to do, but it was. No, I know. I got to remember that you yeah. didn't actually sign off. on No, that. I did not on this one. Not on <laughs> this one. So, um, so to save money, they started looking at other parks and seeing what they can steal to bring to their park to possibly hmm. uh, bring it in. So, okay. um, when you are on, um, sorry. So they went to uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, Flix Flyers was actually the Blowfish Balloon Race from there, and they revamped it to make it from where? From Tokyo Disneyland. Ah, okay. from the um, and and then also they uh, took Francis's Ladybug Boogie. And that was called the Whirlpool. These are from the Mermaid Lagoon section that used to be in Tokyo Disneyland. Okay. So they brought all these over. Um, and then they added Heimlich's Choo Choo Train, the Jumping Jellyfish, and then they uh, redid the water park area at the farm and turned it into the Dots Water Play area. Okay. Now, quite okay. honestly, every single ride... Hold on. If you... In that area, including Heimlich's, Heimlich's Choo Choo Train, is terrible. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Really? Heimlich's Choo Choo Chain is garbage. It's just too <laughs> short. It's really cute. It's just too short. Jeremy's yeah. the one that likes it. Jeremy's the one that likes Mazel. it. Mazel. Mazel. All right. So, <laughs> so let's not talk about the rides because they're terrible. Okay. So let's talk about details. No, all right. Do that. So first, when you walk through, and I wish, um, I, I wish that we could go back there and just look at. The, the area. I wish we could look at the area because when you walk through, yeah. there are so many tiny details that you normally don't notice, which really does make it the second best themed area mm-hmm. in all in all the parks. So, first of all, the lights within the area. Now, the lights are, are on huge straws, like drinking straws, that are elevated and they're upwards of 10 feet above you. Um, at the base of the straw, what you'll see is that there are... Um, Huge uh, number two pencils that are used used as um, a um, like a a base, not just a base for it, but it's like a support for it at the bottom of the bottom of the okay. straw. So basically, they stuck the straw on the ground, stuck a big number two pencil around it, put some string around it to hold it up. Then at the top of it, what you'll see is lightning bugs with the back of them facing down towards you, and that's where you're getting the light the light from. Adorable, totally, totally adorable. adorable. Right? Love it. Um, also, all of the benches within the area, I've never noticed this until I did this. All of the benches within the area are actually made out of used popsicle sticks. Huh. If, you, if you look at it, they're oh. half like half of it is just wood color, oh and the gosh, other half right. is, multi, is a different color. Like there was a popsicle on it that someone ate, and, <laughs> and it stained the stick, right? Wow. It's really cool detail. Wow. Um, That's all, I kind of want one of those. <laughs> I kind of want a popsicle right now. <laughs> All, uh, all the food, honest. all the all the food booths, whether it be like the carts or whatever, all the food booths within the area are either uh, made out of used takeout containers or out of um, mm-hmm. old juice boxes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the water spout in Dots Play area is actually a huge giant water hose, with uh, mm-hmm. uh, and it's the end of the oh. water hose with the water coming out right there as well. Very cute. Uh, as you go to the bathroom, and the bathrooms there are great because there's no one there, and there's two family restrooms there as well, uh, it's actually a big tissue box. That's what the bathroom <laughs> is made out of, right? Um, so, And then there's um, overgrown bamboo throughout the area that helps cut off the sight lines so you can't see Guardians of the Galaxy Tower. You can't see right over to Cars Land. It's right there as well, and so you really um, get lost in this area. But can I say that... Th- this what you're talking about right now. This is why it was created. This is exactly why it's, it was created. It's, it wasn't a very. It, it was a fine movie. It wasn't the best movie, and it. I totally see what you're saying, Jason. But I also think that. Yes, Taryn. <laughs> I've only been here for a few minutes, so yeah, you're the only one I heard talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do feel like. In the boardroom, when they talked about it, this is why is mm-hmm. because like all of these details are super cute. The de- yeah, the details are super cute. This would be my pushback though on this, um, and not against you, no, 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 but I, just against the area. Yeah. So, if you look at 
Disneyland. Oh, if you look at Disneyland as a whole, mm-hmm. yes, everything within the area is supposed to be for kids. But if you look at Fantasyland, which is obviously for kids, right? There's still stuff for adults in the area. Well, right, and I would push back on the Disneyland's for kids. It's for families. It's for families. Yes, it's for okay, families yes. to enjoy right. something together. So there has to be something for adults and for children. Right. Hence the alcohol in DCA. Yes, you're absolutely right. But this is this is the one area. I mean, let's be honest. This is the one area where it's just it's just, just for, for kids. kids. Well, yes, it it is just for kids, except the people like weirdos like us who enjoy the details of that kind of stuff. Man, yeah, I'm so looking I, at this I, faucet thing, and it's just uh, first of all, man. Bruh. Shut up. The correct term is bruh. 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 Yeah, I, I it's it, blowing my mind. I it, never noticed it. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. And 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 I I think. Uh, it is just for kids, but that's I think probably 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 part of the reason why they went all out on the details. Yeah, it is the most fully formed land. Yeah, pre Cars Land. You're right because you need to have the adults enjoy going to the kid thing, right? You're right. Any other park, any other area, any other time mm-hmm. when you have your kids and you have to do something specifically for them, the place stinks. Yeah, you're right. It's just it's not fun. So right. this is. You're right. So, um, some of the, those are some of the details. Also, one of the other things is that um, the sounds during the day and the night are completely different. Yeah, I, n- I did notice that. Oh, it's awesome. I did not know that. Yeah. So, during, oh, I, did, <laughs> I did not know that, Ed. Um, during the day, uh, there's a lot of insect chatter, if you will. I um, mean, at night is basically sounds of crickets. Yeah, it's like hmm. buzzing and like. Yeah, like during, all the during night. The day, but then it, no, that's during the day. I thought. No, no. Well, during the day, there's a lot of buzzing. During night, there's or yeah, slight buzzing, like but more crickets. crickets and stuff like that. Okay. And then there's um, Christmas lights that are up yes. there as well. Yeah. So that's that's the light you're getting. Uh, so, it was announced that this area was. I'm sorry, we're smiling so much that this area would be closing <laughs> permanently. Yeah, how dare you? Yeah. This brought a lot of joy to tens of people. I, right. <laughs> oh, stop <laughs> it. it! You're still ruining need, it. Still need to sign that petition. Yeah, um, it'll close forever on September 3rd, 2018. So construction for a new Marvel themed area. Your signature could have made the difference. I know. Whatever. I'm glad it didn't. Um, and this will be the 14th major change at the park since its opening. The 14th. At DCA. At DCA. Wow. The 14th. <laughs> In how many the, years? Since uh, 01. So what, 17 years? Yeah. It's insane. Wow. All right. So uh, quick trivia. When you're, when you're looking up in the parks, yes. you are basically covered by three-leaf clovers. Mm-hmm. There is actually one four-leaf clover in the area. Um, mm-hmm. It's near the entrance when you're coming in from Hollywood Land, right by the tower. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Guardians of the Galaxy. No, you tower. had it right the first time. Yeah. Well, that uh-huh. dispels the myth that four-leaf clovers are lucky. Oh, well. oh burn. Too bad. Right, yeah. Uh, there are Casey Jr. cookie boxes incorporated within mm. the area. That's an homage to not only the movie itself, um, but uh, not only the train that's in Disneyland, but also to the movie Dumbo. Um, when you're on Heimlich's Choo Choo Train, uh, you're when you go miserable. Yeah, <laughs> when you go through the watermelon tunnel, there's a spray uh, of mist that goes on you, and you can smell watermelon as well. I've uh, never. I, I we went on that once, and I never smelled anything. I've gone through it. I've smelled it before, but then there have been times I've gone through and not smelled it. So I think it might have been. Do you know what they say about the one who smelled it? They dealt it. They dealt it. There you go. I smell like watermelons. I'm cool with it. <laughs> you deal watermelons. Here's <laughs> you get a watermelon. You, you get it. sorry, go. Well, um, you haven't looked at your chairs yet. No, no okay. let me. Let me right. have, don't don't do it a, yet. Have a story about that for the secret <laughs> show as well. So uh, the tent that houses the bumper car one is actually the same circus tent that you'll see in the movie, and every portion of the ride, uh, uh, Flix flyers can be found in the movie. So every single thing. So not only the oh, walnut wow. balloon that you have at the top, yeah, but also all the uh, takeout containers can be seen at some point in the movie. Everything in there can be seen at some point in the movie. Oh, that's cool. So that was Bugs Land. Oh, Yay. good job, Terry. Yeah. yeah, that was great. That was, you you made a page and a half last a long time. It's these two. They 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 talked a lot. Oh, we were like the tangent royalty, yeah. king and queen. Yeah. That, that, Do you have any that makes sense. Tape, the gaffer's tape or anything in here? No. Okay. Why? Because my headphones are wonky right now. I don't know what's going on. What's what? Do you, if you put it down, what happens? If I let go of it, you're yeah. basically gone. Oh, well, it's yeah. good for you. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, go on. Original beats, huh? 
<laughs> old school. These oh. are when Dre was not bought out yet. That's why they're not as good. When he was in his own garage. <laughs> yes. Soldering. These are from Compton, together. yes. Well, Terrence is say solo. <laughs> Terrence say studio. So. Because she got the ones that like the Rasheed Wallace and all the basketball players back in the day would have. Mm. And I, I was poor. So I couldn't get those. I didn't buy these. They were a gift to Jason. That's true. Because a I am cool like that. And you don't. Oh, <clears throat> I'd be rocking those. Yeah, well, you know, potato, potato. You know what I'm trying to say, boys? Not really. <laughs> boys? Past, present, Rude. and future with all the news that's fit to cover. It's the Ears Up Disney News. Here's a story that I, I, I wasn't sure if I was, should do this on the secret show or do this uh, here, <laughs> but I'm going to do it here because yes. I think it's important. Walt Disney Company plans to remove all single-use plastic straws and stirrers from its theme parks, resorts, and properties that it owns and operates across the world, the company announced Thursday. Several companies, including Starbucks, McDonald's, and SeaWorld, have revealed similar initiatives recently in a move to cut down on plastic waste and be more environmentally friendly. Disney estimates it can eliminate more than 175 million straws and 13 million stirrers annually, according to a company press release. Eliminating plastic straws and other plastic items are meaningful steps in our long-standing commitment to environmental stewardship, said Bob Chappick, chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Consumer Products, in a statement. These new global efforts help reduce our environmental footprint and advance our long-term sustainability goals. Disney also said it will move forward on other environmental initiatives, including reducing plastic shopping bags at its theme parks and cruise ships and selling reusable bags, quote, at a nominal price. What's Two, nominal? Three dollars? Because the grocery store is a dollar, so it's got to be more than that. Ten bucks? I would, I would not be surprised if they sell mm-hmm. reusable shopping bags for ten dollars. That is not nominal. No. I have a no, son. Disneyland canvas nah, bag son. and... I don't know where it came from, but I'm sure oh, I paid fine. for it. It could potentially be, <laughs> but I just it's yours now. I'm yeah. sure I paid for it. Well, the problem with that. Co- Sorry, turn. Go ahead. Oh no, that's okay. I was just going to talk about this article and how, uh, while I appreciate uh, it, you think it's I, dumb. I d- uh, yes, it's exactly <laughs> like the plastic bag ban. It's a California thing. Do you think people in Wisconsin care? I, 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 so our. F- California's footprint is not going to change the world. It'll it'll make a small s- step towards something. I'm sure it's <laughs> fine. I this is Taryn rethinking her position. No, I just I as she's articulating. articulating. I like it. I like the concept, but I also really, really, really like straws, and I use them in everything. And I think it's really unfair that I either have to bring my own, bring your own metal straw, or I have to use a stupid paper one, which are super cute, but they work like crap. Right. Well, so here's here's my thing about the plastic bag ban. So in California, those of you who don't know, and probably in other states too, we uh, you can't go to the grocery store and get your your groceries in plastic bags anymore. You have Unless to pay you for them. Pay, for, pay for, them. for them. So, if and you, they're a heavier plastic. If you remember, if you remember back to when plastic bags were free, the good old days. Yes. Yeah, right. Like four years ago. Yeah. Um, the plastic bags were they were thin, yeah. but you could still fit a lot of stuff in there. Yep. Well, yeah. Now they charge you ten cents, and the bag, the mill, I would guess it's at least at minimum three times thicker. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Than what we were getting for free for ten extra cents. Do you think anybody treats those bags any different Mm-mm. than the thinner bags? No. So I still use them to line my ba- my garbage can in my bathroom. Right. Exactly. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes no sense. You're using up three times as much resources. Nobody's doing anything with these bags. It's <laughs> stupid. And now that the I mean the companies want to do it because it reduces their buy cost. They don't right. have to purchase as many stuff. Just like this uh, um, Starbucks thing. Just like the Disney thing. They don't right. have to now. They're not going to purchase any more straws or stores. Right. Right. It's not like going to be tons of. But but maybe also fifty grand. Why do they use wooden stirs? Well, the sugar yeah, is going to exactly. soak to the bottom of my coffee. Yeah, wooden straws. So here's <laughs> the, here's the uh, it's just a hollowed stick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, they hollow them out for pencils. They put the graphite in them. They right. can make you a can straw. Do that with straws, come on. 
So here's the thing. This is, straws. <clears throat> this is catching from uh, Starbucks catching flack from their decision a few months back to do the same thing. Okay. Uh, when Starbucks started serving cold drinks with a sippy cup-like lid instead of plastic straws. Um, Which, yes. I'm sorry, that sippy cup thing at Starbucks is horrible. Hey, I hated your, it. Your lip gets caught on it every time you take a <laughs> sip. It's so bad. I've always had Starbucks with a straw. Well, Always. so the problem, I guess, with straws comes from uh, the lightweight straws can't make it through recycling equipment. Hmm. Oh. So that's how it ends up in the ocean or in landfills, okay. right? Okay. So that's that's part of the problem. Um, John Hov- uh, Hokovar, Hosevar, uh, the ocean's campaign director for Greenpeace, says, We cannot solve the plastic pollution crisis by substituting one kind of unnecessary single-use plastic with another. So he's talking about the, the lid. So what Starbucks is doing is that they're replacing the lid, uh, they're placing the straws right. with that sippy lid. Which is, yeah, single-use. Try drinking a Frappuccino <laughs> right oh, through that, first no of all. Way. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, an article from Fast Company. And yes. also, I think it's only certain Starbucks because it's not like area wide. Be because wide. It's supposed to be company wide. Dude, I got an iced latte from Starbucks well, yesterday. It. I mean, and this is a, an initiative that they just decided a couple months ago. came so. with a straw and a lid. Well, they got to work through all their stuff. Uh, first, there's the problem that few lids make it into recycling bins since someone drinking iced tea or coffee on the street may only have a trash can nearby. So if you think about it, how many Starbucks are out in the world? Think about Disneyland. Too many. Let's, let's make it. Yeah. Let's make it Disneyland centric, right? Mm-hmm. How many recycling bins do you see at Disneyland? None. None. Exactly. So all of that's going into the trash. Sorry. It's not. You've seen a recycling bin at Disneyland, right next to the garbage cans. Really? I've never seen one. They say recycling. I've never seen that. They exist. No. They exist. On the street, maybe. Yeah. But not in Disneyland. I'm not no. talking the, in Disneyland. I kind of think I remember seeing one. Like, I think we maybe just don't pay attention to it because it's like if you have a bottle and it says bottles only, you She's throw it in wrong. there. It's the one that has a circle in it. Yeah, it has a circle instead it. of the push in. Okay. Yeah. How many are there? But anyway, that, I guess that's my 2. point. 2.7. Nobody knows. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. about it. So you got a lot of stuff going to the trash. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but even if someone tries to recycle the lid, again, this is Starbucks specific, it may not actually happen. The material is called polypropylene or number five plastic. The U.S. used to send old number five plastic to China, <laughs> but China no longer wants our plastic, and recyclers are struggling to figure out what to do with all of the waste. Just send it up in the ocean anyway. Some people no longer take it. In Sacramento, California, about an hour and a half uh, from our studio here, mm-hmm. Waste Management recently announced that it would no longer take number five plastic. Other cities have already banned the material. So Then why are they using it? Exactly. Some plastic waste <laughs> is now sent to landfills or incinerated, and other plastic oh, waste healthy. has been sent to countries in Southeast Asia. In the first quarter of 2018, after China's ban took effect, the U.S. sent 6,895% more plastic waste to Thailand oh. than it had the year before. It also sent 611% more plastic to Malaysia and 82% more to Vietnam, all countries that have inadequate infrastructure to actually recycle the waste right. and places where plastic is particularly likely to end up in the ocean. A 2017 report found that China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam were responsible for more plastic in the ocean than the rest of the world combined. But if we're sending our garbage there, it's not them well that's and 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 i guess that's the problem and and you you should google the fast company why starbucks plastic straw ban might not help the environment because they go on to say that the lid actually uses more plastic than the old lids and the straws right right. so it's is not a this is not a solution it's also it's a shift it's a straw man like oh here's the thing oh and it's also clearly not the first time they're putting that thought to use like with the plastic bags it's more plastic Right. It's the same thing. Right. Um, and so then I started reading, um, uh, uh, you know, reading up on it, right? Because, like, why is Disney really doing this? Uh, what else could they be doing? Um, because it does seem like a very much a um, low energy yeah. move. Yeah. <clears throat> balloons. Everyone loves balloons at Disneyland. They sell a ton of balloons. Yeah. yeah. Balloons contribute far more, far more to ocean waste Mm-hmm. Than straws do. Yeah. So if they really cared, if they really wanted to help the environment, as they're saying, 
Get rid of the balloons. I mean, especially those super thick ones that, that stay blown up for six oh, months. Oh, yeah. They have a balloon inside the balloon. The $15 balloons. Yeah, the $15 balloons. Um, anyway, I I don't know. I just, I, I like, um, I like, I don't know, thinking about kind of stuff like that. And I like calling out businesses for doing stuff where it's like, you're not really doing this to save the environment. You're doing this to save money and to try to look good. To look because, like you're making an effort. Because you look bad with all the union things going on and yeah. the, the, the Disney low wages. Oh, you know what we could do to get on the good side of everybody? Let's get rid of straws. Mm -hmm. Straws are, are, yeah, are one of the, the smallest impacts on environmental waste yeah. possible. It, yeah. it makes it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Fishing gear. Fishing line and fishing oh, gear. That's a good call. That cost, that is one of the f number one yeah. contributors to plastic waste in the ocean. Snagged lines mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Stop fishing. No Stop. more fishing. No more fishing. Uh, <laughs> I like salmon. Keep going. I like Sam too. Um, <laughs> He's alright. Here's something fun. How to create a custom boozy ice cream float at Disneyland California Adventure. Hmm. Apparently this is a new thing. Guests can get over... Oh, it's, I'm sorry, I read this as guests can get over 21 flavors of hard ice cream. The line is, guests over, over 21 <laughs> can get hard ice cream float. Holler. 21 flavors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Clarabelle's hand-scooped ice cream, which is really good. Yes. Uh, by the way, they you can make your own bars. Oh, I think, yeah. too. That you get cool. pop rocks on them. Yeah. Uh, guess over twenty can get hard ice cream floats. Uh, each float is ten forty nine, and you can. It's not too bad. Yeah. It's not really, and you can mix and match. Considering beers, ten bucks. Yeah. 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 Excuse me. Uh, you can mix and match any kind of ice cream flavor to any alcoholic drink of your choice. Here's one with Guinness Extra Stout, For, um, and it's literally a cup of beer. With a ice cream bar with a, po like a popsicle stick, yeah, just bonked just in the bonked center. I love it. See that? That's perfect. Uh, you guys can't see it, but uh, first of all, this is from someone on Instagram, Sire Mustache, right? <laughs> and this is what I hate about Instagram because people have like five million hashtags. Some of these don't even don't even relate to this. And it's, I'm a beer guy, and so it you bothers me, and doing. I'm going to say it real fast. But this guy has craft beer, hashtag craft Guinness? beer. Guinness is not, not craft, craft beer, beer, sir, mustache. Sire. So if you're, yeah, yeah, you're going to use craft beer, if you're going to use my hashtag, yes. my industry's hashtag, get it right, dummy. I wish it would have been a Heineken with uh, hashtag craft, craft beer. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Hard root beer floats, hard orange sodas, Guinness floats are even a clever <laughs> Mitch Helado. That's oh. which is ice cream and Michelada. <laughs> Mick Helado. That sounds terrible. What? Well, and there's like a plum on the top or something oh. like that. Anyway, uh, Mick no, Mick sorry. Helado. It's gotta be a tomato. Dos Equis, right? Hashtag craft beer. Not craft beer, homie. They don't know. Get your mind out of the gutter. They don't know. He can be having a ballast point and say craft beer. It's technically <sighs> not craft beer either. And then here's a, uh, an, or a har Henry's Hard Orange Soda Beer Float. Mm. Hashtag craft. Hashtag beer. Hashtag craft beer. Hashtag beer float. Bro, literally nothing about this is beer, craft beer, or, 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 or well, it's an ice cream. It's not a beer float either, you dumb dumb. Also, dumb. Sire are, mustache. Uh, Boo on you. Also, there are a lot of posts on Instagram that are about Disney that say, like, hashtag workout. Hashtag... No, I know. A cup. Like they're it, just trying it, to get yeah. to get views. That's and I don't like do. it. And, but but I don't care about working out because I'm not in that industry. I'm in the beer industry, and that bothers me when yeah. people infringe on a thing. And then so now somebody who doesn't know anything is going to be reading this and go get it. Oh, craft oh beer! God. I love craft beer. Get the. When you have some time, you should peruse the photos of beer floats. Hashtag beer float on Instagram. <laughs> Is it good? We will throw up. <laughs> okay. All right. I like throwing up. I think it's fun. Uh, here's a good thing. Disneyland Resort workers... <laughs> looks like iced tea. That's awful. Disneyland Resort workers approve contract that raises the minimum hourly wage to $15 by next year. <gasps> Yay. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. That's We're going to take most of the credit for yeah. this. Um, all. 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 Yeah. Might as well. Considering... I mean, never mind that this article is from the LA Times... Uh, Doesn't matter. We probably push this agenda. F yes, thank you, Beverly. B L.A. Times, you're welcome for breaking these stories that I've read on the Orlando Sentinel. <laughs> unions, 
representing nearly 10,000 workers at the Disneyland Resort, ended a months-long labor dispute by voting overwhelmingly Thursday in favor of a three-year contract that raises hourly wages by as much as 20% immediately and an additional 13% in January. Their wages are being raised 2% more than our annual passports were um, raised. So that's cool. Wow. The employees, including candy makers, custodian, retail workers, attraction operators, and others, voted nearly 75%. Where's that other 24% coming from? Because they should be fired. Right? No, I don't think we should raise my wages. I think I make uh, $11, and that's good. Yeah. Um, hold on, i got to move my house. I mean, my car. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wow. In favor of raises the minimum uh, wage. <laughs> Three years before, California's minimum wage is scheduled to reach that level. There was no way that Disney couldn't do this. Like right. it was going to be a crap show for, it. I mean, as long as they drug it out. Like it was, ne- they were never going to be perceived well. No. Like they had to do this. Mm-hmm. An increase to fifteen fifty an hour is slated for June two thousand twenty. Resort employees with higher salaries, such as truck drivers, would get more modest wage increases. With workers who earn twenty bucks an hour receiving a wage of sixty cents an hour immediately, and an additional seventy five in January. That makes sense. Hourly pay would increase to twenty one ninety nine in June twenty twenty. Yeah, um, all workers will get a retroactive pay increase of Thanks. either three percent or fifty cents an hour, whichever awesome. is greater. Okay. Back to June seventeenth, two thousand eighteen. So it's not a whole lot of money, but that's still, man, that's really great. Oh, and it uh, applies to um, the near uh, downtown Disney also. Nice. That's good. Um, it gives more workers uh, flexibility to take vacation in smaller increments. And improve the procedure. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that allows part-time workers to get full-time positions. The deal also requires Disney to give specific reasons for terminating or suspending a worker, and it okay. increases the minimum time between shifts from nine hours to ten. Awesome. Wow. This good, good job, stuff, dude. Man. Sometimes... It, it uh, kind of just sounds like Disney's now being legal. Right. Of, yeah. It sounds like they're being fair to their workers in a state that is incredibly hard to live in. Right. <clears throat> True. Anyway, um, that was a, a win for the unions, I That's guess. That's good. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, this is weird. Uh, randomized sequences return to Star Tours, the adventure continues, at Disney's Hollywood Studios and Disneyland Park. Last November, Star Tours, the adventures continue, added a brand new ending sequence, which pushed, pushed, put, 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 which puts guests in the middle of Star Wars Episode VIII and landed in Batu, the location of Star Wars Galaxy Edge themed lands coming to Disney parks. We also told you that the set, that not us, but this article, that the set destinations would eventually come to an end and that guests would soon have the ability to choose which, quote, Star Wars era they wanted to visit, either the original episodes or the new stuff. Right. Which, by the way... This article says the original episodes are one through six. No, they are not. They are not. Four through six. They are four through six. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, this choosing of the era hasn't happened yet as of today. Both Disney, uh, whatever, they're randomized. So there you go. Speaking of plastic. <clears throat> oh, jeez. No, good more. Ziploc, named as the new sponsor of Splash Mountain. Huh. What? Random. Who was the old sponsor of Splash Mountain? Was there one? <laughs> there was, it wasn't a corporate, right? No. Are you sure? Because I, I don't know if you're right on that. Because <laughs> there are a lot more sponsors to the rides than I think you like realize. Like Kodak and Sydney. yeah, there's a lot. No, of I know them. that, but I don't remember ever seeing anything for uh, Splash Mountain as far as a sponsor. As part of the sponsorship or pon- partnership, they call it. Uh, guests will get a Ziploc resealable bag to keep their valuables dry during the water ride. Can I just get a straw? So they're giving away free plastic. <laughs> right. As, actually, that's not a. I mean, aside from the whole plastic part of it that's not a bad it's idea not, for it's an not, event. but uh, but treat it like the glasses in 3d where like they're just like watertight bags like when you, when you go water leaves. rafting you put all your stuff and then as you exit the ride yeah you dump your bag in there because you need a plastic bag to carry around with you it's going to be thrown away anyways it's stupid <laughs> uh the bags will be offered to guests for free and will be on a first come first serve basis. The bags will also be themed with the ride's logo. Okay, so Duh. they're definitely going to be uh, re- you're going to be running out of those. Yeah, I mean, I hope they only do like one box a day or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. 
For sure. Um, Although I will say, if it's yes. themed with the rides logo, logo and stuff, I'd probably keep it. You would keep it, but then, but then you know what? You would, it would go to your house, and then when you move in five years, you're like, what is this? Why do I, I have, have it? And then it's going to go in the trash. So True. either a turtle chokes on it in 10 years or four years. It doesn't matter. It's still going to. Is that both? Is uh, Not both parks. Is that uh, Disneyland? Disneyland, yeah. <clears throat> Um, let's see, which is where I want to go here. Oh, did I not? No, because I'm going to save that, so I'll save the other one. I was going to write read this article because I have good jokes for it, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> save that one for a secret show. Um, applications now open for Disney Dreamers Academy at Walt Disney World Resort. I thought this was kind of relevant for our listeners who have some kids that are college age. Applications are being accepted now through October 31st for the Disney Dreamers Academy with Steve Harvey. Oh. In Essence Magazine. Are you surprised that Steve Harvey, the old dude, does everything? He really does. There's like five of him. This I, I love Steve Harvey. Really? This, I do. I love Steve Harvey. This Lord. annual Outside the Classroom mentoring program is scheduled for March 21st through 24th, 2019 at the uh, WDW in Florida. The program helps 100 select high school students aged 13 through 19 from across the United States jumpstart their life goals and pursue their dreams. Disney Dreamers Academy turns the entire magical setting of Walt Disney World into a vibrant classroom. <laughs> Students participate in a series of sessions and workshops designed to help them imagine bright futures, make exciting discoveries, and learn how to put their goals into action. All right. It's been happening for more than a decade. Blah, 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 blah. The second decade of Disney Dreamers Academy is focused on challenging young people to relentlessly pursue their dreams through something called the B100 campaign. Don't tell me what to do. Steve what? Harvey. <laughs> the B100, dude. <laughs> Um, anyway, if you want to apply, it's a four-day, all expenses paid experience at Walt Disney World. Go to uh, DisneyDreamersAcademy.com. It sounds cool if you have an appropriate aged child. That's cool. Let's do, okay, let's do, well, this is kind of neat. Reverse AR, which is augmented reality. Disney app claims to entertain your family as you wait in line. I posted this on our Facebook page a while ago. It's basically, here's another app. So you can be on your stupid phone and ignore all the hard work of everybody in line and all the cues and all the kind of stuff and not talk to your family, your friends at all, but you're just glued to your phone. Mm-hmm. If you've ever been bored while waiting in line for a ride at Disney theme park, the company has a solution, a kind of reverse augmented reality app. The new Play Disney Parks app offers a number of themed games you Hold can play it. while you're waiting in line, but it has several features aiming to make it a little different to just have your head stuck in your phone while you wait. First, the games are designed to be played by the whole family, passing the phone around between you so that you are not ignoring your partner or kids. <sighs> Second, some of the clues you need to play a game are hidden in the line waiting area, and you shouldn't have to look far for them because Bluetooth beacons are used, so you're only asked to look for things See? that are near you at the time. <laughs> Bless you. Third, and most interestingly, you can use the app to trigger real-world events. What? Apparently, the app can activate physical things seen in the real world. At Space Mountain, you can watch rockets fly above your head just before you board your ship. At Peter Pan's flight, players can make Tinkerbell appear inside a lantern. First of all, no. I will burn that lantern before Tinkerbell gets in there. <laughs> um, Do you know what this is going to create? The, the, those, well, yes. Traffic. But no, those moments where traffic, did you say traffic? Yeah. Yes. Where you have to be like, Excuse the line's me. moving. Yeah. <laughs> Can you go. A little go. shoulder tab action. That is true, but I kind of like it. I mean, they put a lot of thought into it. I think it's kind of I cool. mean, for real though, I am going to download it. <laughs> I know. And then when we go, I'll be like, Bev, let's go. The line's waiting. I'll be like, but I got to do the thing. Yeah, I got to find the Bluetooth beacon. <laughs> Crap, guys, my phone died. It's Anybody like the charger? most relevant thing that they've done in a long time, though. Like, because yeah. people are doing it anyway. They might as well be a part of it. You might as well brand and, it. And it's like, I like the part where, like, it only works in that certain area that mm-hmm. you're in. Mm-hmm. So you really... It does actually draw you into some of the details, I think. Yeah, I agree. You haven't used it. No, I know. Okay. But just based, no, just on, like just based on what okay. you said. Yeah, from right. the, the, from what you, I, was, I just wanted to point out that you have performed an opinion and, and have details about it, and you haven't used it. I, think it's just I have the details from what you just said, Dad. Right, okay. You Maybe. described it, and I was like, huh, All I right. think I'm actually convinced. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right. By the way, forming details without having <laughs> used it, please, Jason <laughs> Petros. Um, and then here, last but not least, oh. <laughs> um, today Lucasfilm has confirmed that Carrie Fisher will indeed appear in Episode Nine, and they're going to use unused footage from The Force Awakens in order to make that happen. Here's director J.J. Abrams as his statement on the decision, which is sure to cause at least a minor controversy. We desperately loved Carrie Fisher. Finding a truly satisfying conclusion to the Skywalker saga without her eluded us. We were never going to recast or use a CG character. With the support and blessing of her daughter, Billy, we have found a way to honor Carrie's legacy and role as Leia in Episode 9 by using unseen footage we shot together in Episode 7. I think it's cringy. It's we real argued. Cringy. We argued a little bit about this. Sorry. It's actually on Facebook right now. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, so they're saying um, this article is from whatever. I wouldn't assume you can simply recycle unused footage and have it fit neatly into another narrative. You have to, at minimum, edit severely. And despite mm-hmm. his assurances that they're not going to use a CGI character, I would not be surprised if the existing footage was touched up by CGI, if only to put her in a new costume. That is a far cry from um, they're going to use CGI. I, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. I don't know why anybody would have a problem with it. It's, it's footage that's already been shot. So you put her in new clothes. Who cares? But if it's footage that's already been shot around a different storyline than what they'll be talking about in this movie, now you're just shoehorning her into the movie. Well, you're shoehorning her into a place that's already been written for her. It, that's so only, it's not really shoehorning. But, okay, it? so that's the thing is that the the footage they're using was not written for this story. It right. was not written for this movie. It was written for the movie previously, sure. and they didn't use it. And so now you are changing dialogue that would have been in the movie to match what was already filmed for a different movie. Yeah, but they change dialogue on the set on the fly every movie. I'll, I'll every scene. I'll repeat what I said on Facebook. It just feels like if if. Star Wars was doing better as a franchise yep. if the last movie wasn't just didn't bomb, you know, for a Star Wars movie, right? Within bomb, relative terms, sure. But sure. I, I don't think that they would have gone this route. I think that is a way you to th- try to hopefully make money and you really people think back you in. think that you, you, you I do. so you don't think it's about the story and about the character and having her have no. to have an arc. You think it's because. Solo didn't make as much as it should no, have. As I think it's. I think that's part of it. I think that you have to figure out a way. Solo's to the make, one that bombed. The last movie didn't bomb. No, you're right. But I think you have to figure out a way to continue to draw people in who are connected to Star Wars, and I think that's another way of doing it. I think it has less to do with her as a character and as a story arc than it does with that. Because wow, that's even cynical for me. I, I like, know, and it was the first time I posted something on the Ears Up page that actually had an opinion. Like, I, I'm, like, very vanilla, but I actually had an opinion with this. Yeah, well, that's true. Okay, well, I'd ask the girls, but everyone knows girls don't, don't like Star Wars, so... I do like Star Wars, okay, it was but I have no opinion on this. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> It was more my non-ironic, ironic joke. It was I'm just being stupid. Yeah I, know. Okay. yeah, I know you like Star Wars. It was a joke. It's just we're joking, everybody. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I got some more news, but let's just go. Okay. Have yeah, save it for do. the secret show. I have to go. I have to go make a drink. You do have to go make a drink. Okay. <clears throat> Before we get to back to the show, let's close this out here. Again, thanks to Goodway today for sponsoring today's episode. Whether you're traveling to Disneyland, Disney World, or beyond. Head over to getawaytoday.com slash ears up. Fact of the show is a turtle talk with crush unit was donated to the new Chuck, Chuck Bill Holmes Hospital, the Children's Hospital, by Walt Disney Imagineering during early 2013 to entertain the child patients and their siblings. It was the first Disney IP attraction created by Imagineering for a non Disney environment and is operating twice a day, still, by volunteering cast members. Nice. That is awesome. That's huh. awesome. Pretty neat, huh? All right, everybody, this has been the Ears Up Podcast. If you're a Patreon supporter, hang on, and uh, maybe I'll try to post the link in the John. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but anyway, until next time, keep your ears up, everybody.